In the aftermath of earthquakes in Southern California, city volunteers distribute cash cards to affected residents. We meet a baseball coach in Taidong who teaches indigenous children basic life skills as well as training for baseball. Welcome to Die Headlines. I'm Siri Su. Thank you for joining us. In the United States, massive earthquake struck Southern California in early July. In the aftermath of the earthquake, city volunteers obtained affected residents' roster with the help of Red Cross. They distributed cash cards to 70 affected households, helping them get through the tough times. Some people really do take life for granted, you know. My family has already been through enough you know, and we still push. I think at this point, it's, it's more so my children that are holding me together. In early July, a massive earthquake struck Southern California. Our tanks, our gas tanks here at the Shell gas station went into the ground deeper and um, it shook up a lot of our ground. There's cracks everywhere. Many buildings were destroyed. Seeing how their houses have been labeled uninhabitable, the residents feel extremely saddened. City volunteers have traveled for more than 200 kilometers to distribute cash cards in the disaster areas. Shishi, they helped us out with $600 to help us rebuild our home. God bless these... God bless these people for helping us. If not, we wouldn't have a place to live. <laughs> Siji has helped 70 families get through the tough times. You have a lot of remarks coming towards you, and it's like, where do I go? Who do I talk to? What do I do? But I'm thankful for you guys. I still need money to pay for my rent. Despite that, Tsuji's cash card has helped me a lot. It allowed me to buy food and other necessities. I am very grateful. In the aftermath of the earthquake, staff members of Red Cross and city volunteers are doing everything they can to help the affected residents get through the tough times. The affected residents will not be alone as they work to rebuild their homes. In Indonesia, earthquake and tsunami struck Sulawesi last year. In the aftermath of the disaster, Tsuji is building dive villages in Palu and Lombok. For many affected residents, dive village brings them hope. Today, we'll meet one earthquake survivor who hopes to start a new life after moving into dive village. Recalling the earthquake and tsunami that took place 10 months ago, Mahira still has lingering fear. Back then, Mahira's family heard the neighbor's screams and things started falling off in the house. Then Mahira used all her strength to pull her family out of the house. We escaped from the house thanks to Allah's arrangement. We could not do anything as the earthquake destroyed my home. After the earthquake stopped, I came out of my shock. When the quake struck, I did not know what happened. The massive earthquake not only destroyed their home, it also took the lives of Mahira's husband and nine-year-old child. Now Mahira is living with her three children. Since her husband was a government official, now Mahira is living off of his pension fund. Fortunately, city volunteers who are building a dive village in Palu has brought her hope. Mahira and her family is granted a house. She looks forward to starting a new life after moving into dive village. I can only live on my husband's retirement fund. I hope that after we move into the permanent house, the government can provide some funds for us to start a business. This is my only hope. Without my husband around, I can only learn to be independent and strong. The Dai village, which brings hope to many more people like Mahira, will be completed in November this year. 
In Palu Sulawesi of Indonesia, there is a famous landmark, the Piscong Park. When the earthquake struck Sulawesi, it damaged parts of the buildings here. However, the park remains open to the public. The Piscong Square is the most popular gathering place for Palu city residents. The square was built to commemorate the social conflicts that often took place in central Sulawesi in the past. There are three circles in the gong. From the outside to the inside, the first circle has 444 logos, representing all the cities and counties in the country. The second circle has 33 logos, representing the Indonesian provinces. There are five logos in the third circle, representing different religions. Finally, there's an Indonesian map in the middle. Senang sekali, kita bisa ngajak satu keluarga. I'm happy to have come here during our vacation. Our family came here for a tour. I hope this tour site can be maintained so more people can learn about the culture of central Sulawesi. Next to the Peace Gun is a 30 meter tall pagoda. It is named Nosarara Nosabatutu, which in the indigenous language means working with one heart and mind. In the aftermath of the earthquake, parts of the structure were destroyed, but the park remained open to the public. I live close by, therefore I often bring my children here in the afternoon. They love to watch the Palu City view here. It's like being at the observatory in Hong Kong. You can see the ocean from here. The place is easy to find and there is asphalt road leading to the park. In the aftermath of the natural disaster, the residents need time to heal their mental wounds and return to normal life. On the 19th anniversary of Daling City Hospital, the medical staff divided into 18 routes and walked into the community and offered free clinic services. They visited family members who took care of patients for a long time and also cared for homeless people living in shelters. On the 19th anniversary of Dalin City Hospital, medical staff is divided into 18 routes, walking into every corner of the community, including air raid shelter where two homeless people were living. The doctors care for them who wear hearing aids. At that time, this person couldn't hear much, so we installed this hearing aid. This consultation service helps better understand the needs of patients and also brings them encouragement. A formerly temperamental Mrs. Huan is grateful to see people now, even if the wound is still fresh and painful from her operation. You work so hard, thank you. City volunteers also work hard. I'm grateful for your concern for us. City physicians meeting patients helps create a more intimate feeling. And when it comes to talk about volunteering, many smile. In the past, our volunteers were very brave, and we call them Yongmu and Yongguo as they're brave. Miss Mai is a single mother, was also surprised that the superintendent would personally visit. Her three sons were all severely mentally challenged. She was also injured in a car accident and her arms could not bend. Her optimism impressed visiting medical staff. <laughs> Upon closer inspection of this patient, everyone is grateful for the love and compassion they experience. 71-year-old Chen Danlu struggled to take care of her son with mental illness for 25 years. Her husband has prostate problems. The daily care was a big burden for her, and Xiamen City volunteers worried about her. She often kept them away. However, the volunteers did not give up, and finally she accepted their help, which improved her life dramatically. In November last year, city volunteers visited for the first time. The 71-year-old Chen Danlu's birthday was full of sadness. Her husband suffered from severe prostate problems, and her son suffered from mental illness. For more than 20 years, she was up almost every night with insomnia. 
My son was born in 1973, and at the age of 21 years old in 1994, he was diagnosed with schizophrenia. I've been eating sedatives as I can't sleep. Afraid that her son's illness couldn't be controlled before April of this year, Chen always kept the volunteers at a distance. However, Xiamen City volunteers persevered and came every month. Sometimes they just come to send vegetables and fruit so that she won't have to go out and do the shopping. City volunteers are very good. Your merits are infinite. Things from the heart, really. I'm very grateful for you. <laughs> Volunteers have invited her to do recycling, and today she is also happy to participate. It doesn't matter if the sun is out. If visitors see us doing this recycling and sorting, they will be inspired by our spirit. However, she couldn't work the whole day because of some physical discomfort. Volunteers accompanied her home. They did not expect interaction with her son to be so wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> Looking at the interaction between the son and volunteer, Mrs. Chen is full of laughter. I didn't think Xiao Yi would change so fast. This is the power of love. He hasn't had contact with outsiders for more than 20 years and can interact with us today. After we volunteer for so long, today's performance makes us happy as volunteers. <laughs> the love of volunteers opened the door to the closed door of her son and let the old mother feel young again. For children in Hualien and Taidong area, playing baseball may be something they cannot afford. This is especially true for indigenous children who may not be able to afford jerseys and other equipment. For this reason, many potential players will give up playing after graduating from middle school. One organization is helping these children as a coach teaches them basic life skills and academic counseling. Keeping an eye on every action is Chen Zhixin. Sweating and holding a spatula to cook rice, this is also Chen Zhixin. We cook ourselves so the children can eat till they are full. We eat more as each one can eat about two lunch boxes. He always worries that the players can have three meals as he plays the important role of father and also a coach. We are just like a family. Everyone who comes in is like his family. The coach is our father and also our mother. Most of the children join beginning from third year of elementary. Training as the hands of Chen Zhixin may involve many tears and emotions. Why do I want to play baseball? Because playing baseball is my dream. My classmates are very easy to get along with. Creating an environment where children can live and grow steadily, not just providing three meals, but something else like the feeling of their parents, or kind of warmth, and the feeling of having a home. In addition to giving love, they do not forget to teach basic life skills to children, such as learning to cook their own food, organizing and preparing breakfast. Dirty clothes from the baseball diamond also should be cleaned by themselves. It is important to be clean on the baseball diamond and come out dirty. This is what makes me most happy. I want to become independent and not depend on my mom and dad for help. Baseball equipment and jerseys are not cheap. This team always faces insufficient resources, which is a constant headache along with recruiting. Now there are fewer children, so the children who play the ball are very few. The resources are small, so the talents will go elsewhere. 
Although this team faces difficulty, they cherish playing this game and feel fortunate that a group of people have supported their efforts to continue playing baseball in their hometown, as all these children are continuing to live out their dreams. In Indonesia, the weather has gradually become hotter, with droughts taking place in some areas. Therefore, farmers have failed to plant their crops twice this year. As their farmland has dried up, the farmers rent fertile lands to cultivate their crops while waiting for the government's help. Due to the dry season, the farmers in the village in Karawan suffer financial losses since their crops failed. Parts of Indonesia have experienced droughts due to the El Nino phenomenon. The farmers are extremely worried as 600 hectares of farmland has dried up. This time is the most serious. Usually, we have plenty of water and enjoy the harvest every year. This year is different. There is a lack of water and many mice have appeared. The mice ate all our crops, which we just planted a week ago. The farmers fell twice trying to plant crops. Their losses amount to about 10,000 US dollars, which is a large amount for small farmers. We have been affected seriously. To cultivate a hectare of land, we need to spend about 1,300 US dollars on seeds, fertilizer, and hiring workers. However, now we cannot even collect a bag of rice. If we planted crops in five hectares of land, which failed to grow, then our losses would multiply by five times. To cut down on their losses, the farmers are renting land. They first cultivate rice seeds in other areas while waiting for the government's help. To mark our special seventh lunar month, city volunteers have made a water cube installation to be hung in Kaohsiung Jing Si Hall. The volunteers have met many challenges along the way. However, they worked together and finally created a water cube installation, which reminds people to cherish water. To make the water cube installation, one needs to place the recycled PET bottles in the mold and then add adhesive. The adhesive needs to be in the line. If it is outside, it would have been wasted. This way, it can be glued together. Look at every bottle, it is glued perfectly, with the adhesive in the middle. The water cube installation will be hung in Kaohsiung Jing Si Hall during the auspicious 7th lunar month. A child has come with her grandmother to volunteer. These were discarded items. We can make them beautiful. Since it is summer vacation, I took her to volunteer, so she will have something to do. She can also do something meaningful. Volunteer Hong Lian Zhong, who is in charge of planning, has participated in almost all the making of various water cube installations. He is good at binding the bottles because he used to run a grocery store. I used to bind alcohol bottles and other bottles. That's how I learned to do this. It takes more than a thousand PET bottles to make the water cube installation. The volunteers had to overcome many challenges along the way. It kept raining for a few days. Therefore, the bottles could not be dried. We had to get rid of water inside and let it evaporate. So, it took us some time. Working with one heart and one mind, the volunteers were able to present the water cube installation. They hoped to teach the public to cherish water. 69-year-old Wang Meizhi is a recycling volunteer in Quanzhou. She saves water and electricity. She also makes good use of recycled paper to write Jingzi aphorisms. In addition, she promotes recycling, which she believes should be practiced every day. Each day I go a dozen or so times, sometimes more than 20 a day. Living on the seventh floor, though her storage room is on the first floor, this means that she needs to take more than 100 steps. At 69, Wang Meizhi is in good health and does it easily. Yes, I make a dozen or so trips, and I'm hard working. Some people can work hard. I don't think it's too tough. It makes me feel healthier. This older woman walks through streets and alleys and collects all of the recycling here. When it is the official recycling day, she uses her tricycle to take them to the recycling station. While it's 10 minutes away, she always spent three times the time because she is collecting recycling. Can I
I want to show my love for the earth. If the earth is safe and healthy, everyone will be safe and healthy. Simple thoughts and actions are implemented as his bucket of laundry water can mop the floor and also water the flowers and flush the toilet. I do not use the electric fan or air conditioning. Even though it is so hot, the back door has a natural breeze, which is very cool. This is what my grandson was studying in middle school. Water saving and electricity saving has been long part of her life. The grandson's workbook is full of Jingsa aphorisms, which she wrote. The bamboo coin bank contains money saved because she did not burn Joss money. This big jar is when I worship the ancestors and put the money saved for not buying Joss money. This ant's heart also helps reduce the burden on the earth. We do things more casually and she couldn't accept this before. After becoming part of Tsiji, her heart became more accepting. Now Wang Meizhi can find the joy of everyday life. A recycling station in Guangzhou opened up their recycling day to the public, inviting them to learn the correct way to sort recyclables. Then over in Dongguan, a summer camp was held at a recycling station, where the students learned how difficult life is in Eastern Africa. A cup of beans for 44 people to eat. This is the reality of those who have suffered from the Eastern African disaster. Through additional footage, the children have seen how best to help those in need. The children in the footage are so sad. She says she feels bad and wants to help them. The parents and children's summer camp held by the Dongguan Recycling Station not only taught the children how to be responsible for their actions, but also experienced some of life's difficulties, learning to give selflessly and protecting Earth's natural resources. The students also went to the shops to promote recycling and share some Jing's aphorisms. People who make excuses will never improve. For example, if one tells you to do the dishes and you say your hand hurts, then you will never do the dishes. Through the three days of activity, the parents have felt their children's emotional growth. My daughter wrote down her dream, which really moved me. Because she wanted to be a nature instructor when she grows up, that's what I do now. In Guangzhou, the teachers and parents of Xiguan Foreign Language School have brought the students to learn more about their recycling efforts and also to get some hands-on experience. Bottles, cans, paper, batteries, clothes, electronics, hardware and others, we have remembered this slogan. We should purchase the clothing that we need, not what we want. These are all volunteer Xiaofeng Ying's daughters, classmates and parents who have heard of Tsiji's recycling ideals. I post the information about Tsiji's activities to my circle of friends, and they will like it. Some will ask about it. When they do, I promote the concept to them and spread Tsiji's ideals to them. With everyone's combined efforts in doing the right thing, this positive energy will transform the society into a beautiful place. The Tsiji Mobile Clinic in the United States has traveled to Moss in California to hold a free clinic for residents in need. We'll leave you with these images. Thank you for joining us. Goodbye.